I'm going to go ahead and start recording this. So welcome. It's the 10 day challenge uh, for the finale and we will rock and roll with this now. I'm going to go ahead and make this go away for a second. It'll come up up here. So I still will kind of be adding people in as we go. So if you're not hearing me, that means you're not in yet. All right, I do have everybody muted. So just for um, purposes of going on with the, and keeping it questions till the end. If you do have a question, I think that you can, uh, uh, we can open a chat. I had a chat, let me, I'm gonna, you know, you can open a chat or unmute yourself and ask a question, but let's kind of wait till the end if that, that makes it a little easier for me. All right, so welcome. Congratulations, you've made it to the, uh, survivor of the 2020 you did it um, even if you didn't do the uh, whole kit and you just did you know made some changes in your dietary eating that's perfect and that's what we want we want you to make a change we have this time and now we're going to be re-entering into the new world uh, on monday so i want everybody to be healthy and this gives you a good way to get some of that a little bit of that weight off before you enter back into the the real world so we will let me just see if i can there we go so after the 10 day, we have 10 really big physiological changes that happen to your body. Um, you know, your, your blood sugar got a little break because I know some of you have hammered it pretty hard this past month because we have to eat our comfort food. And some of you did really well, and I know that. Um, so, and you kind of look at this chart and this kind of explains how the whole thing happens when we eat sugar. Um, and we want to maintain that homeostasis of 70 to 110. And remember, I've talked before that your blood glucose level, when we take your blood and I, I read your blood in class you know, and you're, if you're doing a functional medicine appointment with me, I always suggest your blood glucose be between seven, uh, 87 and 88. Uh, that's ideal. Anything under 90 is really ideal and that's going to be make, make you more um, healthy or your immune system will be stronger, um, less, you know, more cancer resistant. Remember, uh, sugar feeds cancer, so we want to be mindful of that. And that's the whole reason I, I like to do the 10-day blood sugar. It's a great cleanup, great pick-me-up, especially if you did the 21-day and you kind of fell off the wagon. It happens, and I understand that. So we will kind of go through all these things, and then we'll have some fun. So um, when we look at this chart, this kind of really shows how all in one piece what happens. So when you uh, when you eat something, I'm going to see if I can yeah, use my mouse. When you eat something, you, uh, your blood glucose rises, and that stimulates your pancreas to release the beta cells, which then release insulin. So the insulin then does two things. The liver takes up the glucose and makes glycogen. Glycogen is stored in your muscle, and that's where we get our energy. And then the blood cells take up more glucose. Then the blood glucose falls, and you come back to homeostasis. But if we're not eating right, you your blood glucose falls, le levels fall, then your alpha cells release uh, glucagon, and then your liver has to break that down into glycogen to release glucose, and then the blood glucose rises. So we have two little ways that that can happen. Um, both of them are ideal. We're the ones that kind of make it so it's not ideal. I'll get the direction in a minute, sorry. So 10 things that happen. Your heart will be do a happy dance. You, you're at lower risk of dying from heart-related uh, um, trouble. Uh, remember, sugar raises your sympathetic response, and sympathetic is your fight or flight mechanism, and so that raises your heart rate and your blood pressure as well as your LDL and your cholesterol. Remember, when you're eating a lot of sugar, your liver has to make uh, the low-density lipoprotein to carry the triglycerides around, so that's technically what raises up your cholesterol. It's not the fat. Remember, it's not the fat that makes you fat. It's the sugar that makes you fat, so you don't have to borrow your teen's um, acne cream anymore. Um, so you, you can, because that's all caused by systemic inflammation. So, and we, we've talked about this last time that the sugar is very inflammatory. You're sidestepping diabetes. The more sugar you eat, the more you build up fat around your liver and then the deposits create insulin resistance and then your pancreas can't do its job. And insulin resistance is a big problem, especially for my patients that have big weight management problems and they're having trouble losing weight. They, you know, over a period of time, you've built up some resistance. So that takes a time to break that down. It's a slow process, but once you can get that, those steps in place and broken down, then, then it's cruising. All right. So you won't have to have that fake smile. So you'll, you'll feel good and you won't have, uh, you know, you won't have to uh, 
bite into the comfort food, you'll actually have a, a better mood and uh, less moody changes. So you won't have that hangry. I know someone in our household gets that hangry feeling sometimes. And I'm sure you're all familiar with that. You'll uh, be able to sleep better. So for me, you know, I think that when you decrease the, the sugar, that helps me more than anything sleeping better. And not that I do a lot of sugar, but I clean up my diet a little bit from some of the things that we kind of get carried away with, like cheese and sometimes fruit for in our household. Um, maybe some grapes that are turned into a drink, like maybe vino. Um, maybe, I, I, you know, I could drink wine. Yes, and I do, but not very much. Okay, I'm lying. Only on the weekends. The crash from the sugar that makes you kind of sluggish and you need a nap and your sugar increases and that, that makes the cortisol get released. And remember, I've talked about adrenal glands releasing cortisol. And when you get stressed, you release cortisol. And if you, you spell stressed backwards, it does spell desserts. That's why you crave something when you uh, get stressed. So when you're stressed, it's also difficult for you to sleep. Uh, you have a better memory. Sugar is one, the big cause of brain fog, you know, and, you know, we're feeding our kids sugary cereals in the morning and then sending them to school or sending them to Zoom. And so we know that sugar hinders their memory and their learning and actually damages communication among those brain cells, not only for the, the kids, but for adults as well, especially as we age as adults. And it also slows down the aging process. So when you reduce your sugar, um, you reduce the, um, the process called glycation that happens, and that causes the collagen in the skin. It causes the age. We cause inflammation of the arteries and of the skin, um, the elastin in the skin, the proteins that keep our, our skin so supple. So you stop being a slave to your sugar cravings. And if you're still having some issues, that's not uncommon. You may still need a little bit of help, and you're, well, you're welcome to stay on the Gymnema. Gymnema is a great herb, and I always recommend to kind of keep a half a bottle in the cabinet. So if you feel those uh, cravings coming on, then you can right away pop in a couple of Gymnema and get that started to get them, the cravings down. But it's an addictive um, as addictive as cocaine and we saw that last week in the the videos and if you watch the movie fed up you saw how you know the the kids are just addicted and, and I, I just felt you know my heart just you know cried for the one little girl that just wanted a pill you know because she was it, it would just make it so much easier so you know kids get addicted to it just as we do as adults so it's a you know really really a strong addiction so you know when you eat sugar you crave it then your blood sugar you know, increases, then dopamine, which is the, that's what's so addictive because that makes you feel really good. And then that massive insulin uh, that's secreted then causes the blood sugar to drop because that's its job. And then, but it falls so rapidly, then, then you get that low and then you have to get that high back and it just becomes an, a vicious cycle. So that's why it's really important to stop the sugar um, as well as, uh, you know, the other things, especially that fed up movie to me is just an amazing movie. Even though it's an older movie, it still is very, plays a, a big role in our, our world today. Uh, you reduce your risk of illness, of chronic illness, you know, asthma, allergies, heart disease, all those things, uh, even cancer are caused by chronic inflammation and sugar is the big one. So the poor diet that's really rich in sugar and white flour is the real culprit for those inflammatory responses. And you finally lost that extra 10 pounds. You start, you know, trading your sugary granola in for a handful of almonds. You won't be eating as many calories overall and you trade sugar for a protein or a fat. So that's kind of what we want to look at. And maybe you didn't lose 10 pounds. Maybe you only lost five. Maybe you only lost two. But you have to feel better. And it's, you know, 10 days is not a long time. And you have to realize how long it took for you to put those extra pounds on. So this is why you always hear me say this is why we call you patients, not impatients. So we have a lot of non-scale victories, and I think this is also important to recognize. You know, uh, your clothes fit better, you have more energy, you have improved endurance, uh, you have better sleep quality, you have fewer cravings, you feel healthier. Those are really important. And if you didn't have those kind of, you know, victories, then I, I uh, you know, want you to look at this. The scale only measures, you know, it measures all of you, not just your body weight. I mean, not just your fat. So it's just a number. You know, that number doesn't tell you, as you can see there, that the scale will not tell you what a great person you are, how much your friends and family love you, that you're kind, smart, funny, and amazing in many in ways numbers cannot define, that you have the power to choose happiness and your, your own self-worth. So remember those things, too, when we go on these programs. It's not always what the number on the scale says. It's relative. If you feel better and you look better and you have more energy and you, you know, that's, that's worth its weight in gold. And there's two things you can't buy, happiness and health. And if you don't have either of those two things, 
then, you know, everything is for naught. And that's why, uh, you know, I'm so passionate about teaching this and teaching you uh, because I really care. So if it didn't work for you, I fixed the scale so you have nothing to worry about now. So don't worry about the scale at all because I broke it for you. All right, so the movie Fed Up. So I have a couple questions to ask you so you can answer these polls. So the movie, I hopefully, was very eye-opening. And if you have kids, hopefully the kids watch it. If you haven't watched it and you're just joining us for the first time, please, please take the time. It's on YouTube. I'll resend the link. Uh, because I think it's very valuable, especially for this day and age. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's just very eye-opening. So let's, let's throw a little poll in here about the movie here. Okay, here's your first question. What year was the McGovern Report submitted for review? This was the big deal where they submitted this and they said that, um, that sugar was, uh, you know, uh, such a demon, blah, blah, blah. And then they all got upset um, that you – all right. Oops, nobody, I'm sorry, wait a minute. I didn't get didn't even give you a chance to vote. Sorry about that. I don't know if I can go back. I'll go ahead and vote anyway. It's just, it's just adding them up as we go. So the McGovern report, then, you know, he was like uh, so upset that, you know, people, the, the big business came in, big, um, the big corporations came in and said, hey, you can't do that to us. You know, you're cutting our, into our bottom line. And I, you know, it's just shocking how much, you know, the government, I mean, the, the big pharma, not big, well, big pharma, but also the big companies really kind of rule the roost in there. So we got a couple more to answer here. Yeah, we've got some pretty good answers. So, you know, for me, that was super shocking when I first watched it to see how, um, although they had the evidence that they completely just said, oh, nope. All right, so I think we got just about everybody in. Um, the year was 1977, that is correct. All right, so that was awesome. So let's see if we can, if I share the results, what does that say? So 60% of you got it right, very good. All right, so that was the first one. So we will go on as we go here. Let me just pop up another one. Let me see how I do my next one. We launch polling. Clear existing poll results. Cancel. All right. I know I have another poll. Let me see if I can. You know, modern technology here. All right. We'll go on. I've got a bunch of questions there. So, you know, as you change your diet, here, here's what I'm suggesting to you. This is, this is what we do in our household. I consider myself a, a ketotarian style of eating, meaning I do probably 80% of my protein is plant-based, um, I usually make that plant-based protein in my shake, and I use the Veggie Pro shake, so I can I know that it's low in the glycemic index. Um, I do have some eggs, we have some fish, may have some chicken, but for the most part, about 80% of our my my protein is plant-based. If you're a female, I usually recommend eating your protein a little bit earlier, um, half your body weight in grams of protein. That's half the body weight you want to be, not your current body weight if there if you have a weight management issue. Um, so this is kind of how I, I, I do my, I, I call it like a, uh, a ketotarian triangle of eating. So I'll have some low fructose uh, fruits like berries, uh, lemons, limes, grapefruit, um, low starch vegetables, onions, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, yellow squash, you know those. Um, and then as the, they come down, I clean protein uh, and greens, nuts, seeds, tempeh, fish, leafy greens. I'm not a big tempeh or um, satay, uh, you know, the, the vegetable protein that's kind of processed. I don't like that part of it. Um, and I'm, if you can get some soy that is um, a non-GMO, which is challenging and organic, you know, you can use that. Um, but I, I kind of, uh, uh, you know, I'll add a little bit, but there'll be days where we'll go um, all day with just, uh, just straight uh, plant-based protein. And I feel perfectly fine with that. And the key to the ketotarian is the healthy fats. So I'm, I'm heavy on the organic whipping cream in my coffee in the morning. Um, I use real butter. Uh, we use, uh, I eat a lot of avocados, avocado oil, your EVOO, which is extra virgin olive oil, ghee, which is from is clarified butter, real butter, eggs, um, olives. So those are all things that you can incorporate into your diet, which the, the whole purpose of that, it keeps you satiated. So if you're eating enough fat, so the way I explain it, and if you've been in my uh, a functional medicine appointment with you, we've talked about this. When you eat and you're a sugar burner, so you can be a sugar burner or a fat burner. 
sugar ends, burns up pretty quickly. And you can't take your sugar burning and go burn it in fat. It's just like you can't take your car to a gasoline station if you're a gas engine and put diesel in it and expect it to work. It's not how it works. So in sugar, when you run out of fuel, the next available thing is muscle. So then you do start muscle wasting. And if you burn your muscle, then you replace it with, unfortunately, fat. But if you're a fat burner, so here's the key. If you're eating enough fat, then your body says, oh, I can use the fat for fuel. And then if I run out of fat, I have fat that I can call from. So that'll keep you more satiated. And it keeps your body a little bit happier. It keeps your skin better. Um, it's better for your brain. So I find that about... So most of my diet comes from, you know, uh, avocado, butter, olive oil. And you have to remember that a, a gram of fat is almost 10 calories. So it's not like I'm eating the stick of butter, but if I eat a, a, a pat of butter, that may be um, you know, 10 calories, but, you know, the same amount of food would be double that for a protein or carb. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So the good thing is like when I go out cycling in the morning, like on the weekend, I do a long bike ride. I only have two cups of coffee with organic, oh, as I say, I have my organic whipping cream with coffee in it. And that is enough fat to uh, last my whole ride. And I'll go out 50 to 70 miles and never get hungry. Now I hydrate along the way, mind you, but I don't eat anything. Because once I eat something that's carbohydrate, I start switching my body back and it gets confused. So now I'm really good at fat burning. And I've been doing it for a, a probably two years now, a really, really um, dedicated uh, for the past year, year and a half since I started uh, racing. And I can tell you that I really um, enjoy it because I really, I rarely get hungry. And I, I say I don't have an appetite. And what I mean by that is I just have time to think about what I'm going to eat. I don't have to stand in front of a microwave and say hurry or you know grab whatever is available so that's kind of how I do it now I do add some cheese in but um, we've been careful with cheese because it's just an easy go-to and cheese is milk and milk is lactose lactose is milk sugar so you want to make sure you're careful with that and as you saw in the movie fed up you saw what they did with all the, the leftover stuff to make cheese out of you know when they started going skim milk so remember the old low fat you know um foods that came out, I guess, in the late, well, it's from the, the, that McGovern report. They started reducing the fat and everything, but they loaded it with sugar because things without fat don't taste as good, so they just loaded it up with sugar. So they weren't really doing anybody any good. So if you kind of look at how this goes, and I will record this, and I'll upload it on YouTube, and I'll send the recording for both classes um, tomorrow, so that way you have access if you want to look back at some of the slides. So these are kind of my rules that, that, that I go by. So, uh, you know, I try to eat real food. Um, you know, we do a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. We just planted our living, um, living tower this past weekend. So we'll be able to cut out our greens out there. And it's so wonderful because you just walk out, cut your salad, pull your tomatoes, some sugar snap peas. Um, we have basil, we have uh, cilantro. You can make a whole salad with that and then walk in the house and then it keeps growing. So you clip it and it keeps growing. So it'll last a good four months for us to eat off of. So it's a great investment for $30 and that was what our plants cost. Um, so keep your carbo carbohydrates low. So I keep my carbs between 50 and 75 grams. And if that feels hard, if you go to a true keto style of eating, you're going to be eating only 20 grams of carbohydrates. And that's super hard. And a lot of people aren't successful with it and they quit too early. If you keep it at that 50, 75, and at least try to keep it under 100, and I, I encourage you to track your carbohydrate intake for about two weeks so you know what, your, what foods are in there. A real good app, app that I use is Carb Manager. It's a free app, and you can actually scan um, items, and it'll tell you if it's an A food or an F food. Uh, so that's really helpful in letting you understand what the foods are and the carbohydrates. So the uh, healthy fats are important. Um, that, I mean, we want to keep those high because that's what keeps you satiated. Uh, so if you eat non-starchy veggies uh, and you add healthy, st I'm going to just pull the chat up here. I see it, it coming up here. Uh, carbs. I'm going to pull this over the side here. And uh, let's see. Can't see the poll. Sorry. We'll get back to that. Um, carbs. Is that per meal? That's per day. Uh, that's per meal is what most people do. Most people are doing 200 to 250 carbs a day. And that's why we have such a problem. So in the movie, if you watch like the, the two, two boys, um, you know, they're, they're, the one was making his breakfast, but it was all sugar. 
And then the other little boy trying to do the right thing, he's making his, you know, healthy, you know, we, you know, uh, sandwich. But I mean, you know, by dinner time, you know, they're, they're over their, their quadrant. And even the moms are trying to help. And they're picking all the low fat stuff. So you can see where the problem is. So uh, keep your fats high. That's what keeps you from getting hungry. If you eat non-starchy veggies, like if you eat, like we eat broccoli. So we either um, uh, mix it in with a little bit of olive oil and we roast them or we saute them in butter. And that helps to kind of keep you satiated. If you're just eating a green salad and, and no good fat on there, no olive oil or anything, then you're, you're going to be hungry in a little bit. So uh, we eat when we're hungry and then we eat till we're satisfied. That doesn't mean you have to be gluttonous. And if you're eating real food, I mean, you can't eat 10 heads of car um, broccoli. If you can, good for you. All right. So let's talk about labels here. So labels are really important. And, and I find that everybody has a hard time with this. And uh, when Marianne and I were watching the movie, um, you know, she talked to me about how confusing it, it is. So we'll go through reading a label. So first of all, one gram of fat equals, equals nine calories. I always round it up to 10. It's just easier to calculate. One gram of carbohydrate is four calories. One gram of protein is four calories. And they're always listed in this order on the label. So we look at the total fat, which is 4.95. We multiply it by nine, which gives us this 44.55 calories. We take our uh, carbohydrates and we multiply that by four, which gives us 80.72 calories. We take our protein, which is 3.6, and multiply it by 4, and that gives us 14.4, 14 14, 14 giving us a total calorie count of 139.7. But remember in the movie, they talked about how they leave these sugars empty huh, and trans fats empty. Well, they're in there, but they're not required to uh, put the daily value on there. So when we look at the total calories on this particular serving, it says 137, but in reality, it's 139.7. So be careful, Re learn to read your labels. I mean, it takes longer in the store. And if you're going up and down the aisles, you'll find that you'll do a lot of label reading. If you pick up an apple, there is no label on it because you know it's an apple. But if, if you pick up a, a package of apple snacks, there's all the snack uh, ingredients on there and it's more than just apple. And if you can't read it and you don't know what it's saying, then you know that um, it's not to be eaten. So this is kind of a good way to kind of look at how your uh, labels are. And I think if you can get better about reading the labels, that'll be a big help to you. All right, so let me slide this over. So these are the, so intermittent fasting is another kind of facet that, you know, I'm just trying to introduce you to, to give you some good ideas of what to do. The uh, intermittent fasting is, is kind of what I do. And there's a couple different ways you can do it, but there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, it helps to reduce, uh, it um, enhances your uh, insulin sensitivity, meaning that when you intermittent fast, your body does the right thing when you eat. It takes the glucose and puts it into the cell, which it's supposed to do. If you're insulin resistant, it's trying to put it in the cell and it can't go and it gets turned into fat. They did some really good uh, little diagrams when the, guy, the little kid was eating almonds compared to the kid that was drinking the soda and how that, that sugar gets broken down. Um, intermittent fasting also fights inflammation. Uh, promotes heart health and also helps you helps your brain and it boosts weight loss if you're trying to do any of those things or need any of those things um, it's the way to go so let me show you how um, I kind of do it I, I kind of put these infographics up here to kind of help you let me make that smaller so there's uh, six different types of intermittent fasting this is the most popular this is this is what I do so I do a 16 hour fast each day um, and I sometimes do a 20 hour and I don't do the same thing every day. So for me, Monday, Wednesday, um, you know, I get up at, before the chickens wake up. Um, I actually kick the rooster to wake the rooster up. So I get up around 3.30. I'll have a cup of coffee with my whipping cream in there. And then I won't eat my first meal till 10.30. And then I eat my meals between 10.30 and 6.30. And I don't snack at night after that. Uh, that's that's generally what I try to do on Tuesday and Thursdays. I don't eat till 1230. And then my last meal is at 630. And then I eat in between that. And so that I get the calories I need in between that. That's the most popular to me. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, the other thing you can do is the other type is to fast for two days per week.
you know, pick days where you're busy working that you can do that. You can drink water. Um, you could, uh, I, I wouldn't drink your fruit juice, but if you wanted to do some broccoli or celery, you could drink that. Um, but if you drink, if you're doing carrots or apples, you're getting too much sugar. So the other one is uh, eat, stop, eat. So you fast for 24 hours, once or twice a week. And then, so you eat one day, you fast one day, you eat one day. So you just kind of alternate it. Uh, alternate day fasting, eat every other, fast every other day. The warrior diet, I, I have a couple friends that do this. They fast during the day and they only have one big meal at night. That doesn't work for me because uh, I, because the way my workouts are in the morning. So, but it may work for you, especially if with a busy day, if you can go all the day and eat that, but that doesn't mean you can just eat anything you want. We want to stay in those guidelines of my, my, my triangle back here of, of my uh, food triangle. So you want to stay in those realm of foods there. Okay. So, and then the last time is spontaneous meal skipping. Just skip a meal when it's convenient. You know, that's kind of how almost how my intermittent fasting started. I just, I wasn't hungry after I worked out. So I would kind of wait and I wanted to eat before I got ready for work. So that kind of worked for me. And that's what I felt the best with that. And, you know, really we eat too much food. We know that. And if you want to be, um, if you want to be, let's say, um, like longevity, and I'll talk about that a little bit in, in a bit, but the, the people that live the longest that are the most healthiest are in Okinawa, and they eat one meal a day, and they don't eat junk. They eat fish, they eat greens, they garden, they exercise every day, they visit with their friends, they green, drink green tea, and they, they do something to give back. Either they work a job until their 70s and 80s, or you know, take care of family or work a part-time job or volunteer. So there's all different ways that you can do that. So immune systems, the other thing, and, and because of all the stuff that we've got going on with COVID and we're going to be released out into the new world on Monday uh, to our new normal, I, I think it's super important that we don't let our guard down because a lot of you haven't been going to work and have kind of, you know, sheltered in and stayed, you know, stayed safe. And we haven't gone out to restaurants and, you know, we're staying six feet. So when everybody starts getting out and doing their normal thing again, we're going to be exposed. So you want to have your immune system as strong as possible. That doesn't mean you won't get sick, but you're less likely to get sick and you'll be able to get back in action quickly. So uh, I, I like this, this quote, a prosperous future needs a healthy you and a healthy you needs a healthy immune system. And I think that if anything we get out of this whole COVID experience is that maybe we can be a little healthier, maybe we can eat a little bit better, we can think about our wellness instead of our unwellness, we can think about being uh, health instead of disease. And that's one really my passion about teaching you in a class. And this gives me an opportunity to be able to, to get all of you in one place and tell you this message. So you can tell. You can tell your kids. You can tell your family. Uh, you can tell your friends, your, your um, partners in crime. You can you know, help everybody, people at work. So we all have the same organs. We all respond to viral in infections and flu differently. We all depend on medicines and vaccines sometimes to recover from ailments and, and injuries. Yet we all have a different recovery time. And how can you be in a room, you know, you work in an office and everybody gets sick except for one or two people. Why is that? We're all breathing the same air. Well, somebody's immune system is a little bit stronger. So I think it's important we, I kind of give you some advice on how to keep your immune system strong. So it's our first line of defense, you know, an attack against any microorganisms. And once again, about the COVID, I think it's really important too that you understand the microorganism is sticky, but it's like a piece of glitter. If a piece of glitter gets on your face, it doesn't have legs. It doesn't locomote into your mouth, nose, or eyes. We're the ones that put it in there. So wash your hands. Keep your hands off your face. You know, if you feel comfortable wearing a mask in, in public, that's fine. Gloves, I have a hard time with. You're better off just washing your hands. Um, especially if you're wearing the gloves all day, you're, then you're contaminating everything you've touched. So you're better off. Uh, we keep wipes in our car. So if I go into a store, I come in my car, I wipe my hands, and I wipe my car down. So I do that and I work on keeping my hands off my face. I know that's the hardest thing. And as soon as I tell you to keep your hands off your face, you're like, oh my gosh, I got I to fix. Now, everybody's seen all the videos of that. That's, they're quite funny. So there's nobody that we can escape falling sick. I mean, even as healthy as I am, I've, I had pneumonia. I mean, but, you know, it happens. But the ones that are, have a stronger immunity get back into action quicker. So that sooner than those who don't. And remember, sugar is a big, big, big immunosuppressant. So how do you support your immune system? 
I think for you, supporting your immune system is, uh, is key. Um, here, these are ways you can do it. You can bring down your stress level. And I know this is a super stressful time, but you know, I, I try to give you some ideas you know, and some emails, um, apps to uh, calm yourself. Um, exercise is great for bringing stress down. Meditation, prayer, gratitude list, all those things are great ways to bring your stress down. Limit your consumption of alcohol. I know that it's like we had this you know, four weeks that we didn't have to be accountable. So maybe our alcohol and Increase, um, intake increased a little bit. Um, hopefully, you were, you were better, especially with this 10 days. Um, eat your veggies. Veggies are so packed with vitamins, especially the better they are. Even if they're not organic, I'm okay with that. The more organic, the better. But if you can eat organic, you're going to get a better benefit. Eight to 10 years if you eat regular uh, veggies, but 15 to 20 years if you're eating organic because you're not exposed to the pesticides, insecticides, and all the other things they, they do to them. So make sure you're eating your, because they're fiber rich and nutrition dense, and they feed us a whole pack of uh, vitamins that, I mean, I do supplement even though I eat well, but I just can't eat enough food to get enough supplements in, uh, to get enough of the vitamins in. So exercise routinely. With this four weeks, hopefully you've had time to really set up a good routine. For me, um, I put little um, uh, workouts on the whiteboard in our uh, workout room, so we have a workout to do every day. Um, I haven't missed riding my bike. I just rode the trainer, and then we have a uh, socially distant rides. Um, sleeping appropriate hours. You know, really, you want to keep your hours, you know, six to eight hours, no less than six. And more than eight, I'm, as we age, we don't really need as much sleep. And if you're really requiring sleep where you can't get your head up, the, head up off the pillow, you may have a thyroid issue, you may have some underlying issue, and talk to me about it or talk to Dr. Cooper about it. And if you're smoking, stop it. Stop it now. That was one thing with the COVID. They said, if you're smoking, stop. Stop immediately. Because that was the one big factor in people, um, you know, not recovering from the, the, the flu, the virus. Um, soak up some Dr. Sunshine. Get out there. We've got gorgeous weather down here. I mean, we can get out there and breathe the fresh air, especially with less traffic on the road. The air has been so much clearer. Um, eat mushrooms. Mushrooms are really good. Now, I'm not a big fan of regular mushrooms. I'm a fan of shiitake, um, uh, criminy, um, a portobello, because they're grown on like uh, wood. They're actual fungi. Other mushrooms are grown in chicken shit. Yes, I said it. So if you live in Tavares where I do, and I drive to Mount uh, to Winter Park on a lovely uh, summer morning, you get to smell the effer effervescent smell of the mushrooms. So I, I do stay away from those. You can still eat them. You'll get benefit from them. But really, it's the maitake and the shiitake mushrooms or, and the portobello and the criminy that you'll get more um, the good stuff from. Uh, take your supplements and herbs to help support your immune system. <clears throat> and your immune system is made up of several different things. Your mucous membranes, lymphatic vessels, your tonsils. Some of us don't have tonsils anymore because they thought it was a good idea to take them out. And now they're saying, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that, but too late. Um, thymus gland, lymph nodes, your spleen, your skin, your bone marrow, your lymphatic vessels, uh, also your large intestine. Uh, your, your thymus gland is your short-term immune system. Your spleen is your long-term immune system. So we want to keep this really uh, replenished. And if you're a person that seems to get sick all the time, we want to really strengthen your spleen. Thymus if you, is like your short-term. That's your, that's your master gland for your immune system. So we always want to keep that stoked. So here's kind of a you know, idea that I talk about. It's like preparing your shield. So we want to raise our shield and kind of defend ourselves. So this is what what I, what we recommend in the office. And this is what we do. So in our, um, our travel bag, when we travel and in our home, we have like our, our, our support cabinet. Um, we have Immuplex and we take Immuplex to support the immune system. So Immuplex kind of keeps us from getting sick. Then Contraplex is when you get sick. So if we're traveling, we take Immuplex to support our immune system. Normally, what I do is at the beginning of every month, I do uh, probably eight, eight to 12 uh, Immuplex a day. I spread it up three or four times a day for about four or five days, and then I stop. And I do that once a month to kind of keep my immune system strong. Now, because of all, everything going on and we're still exposed to patients, I do a little bit more than that. So I do the Immuplex, but I also do um, 
the epiimmune complex. The epiimmune is really mm -hmm. good because it has the shiitake mushrooms in there, uh, the maitake mushrooms as well. So it helps to keep your immune system balanced. The thymex and thymus, remember the thymus is your uh, immune master gland. So that's your short-term immune system. So um, I recommend something like that for somebody that's getting sick all the time or has some underlying immune system. We really want to stoke that. And if it's a really, um, you, you get sick all the time and anybody coughs or sneezes, you get it, um, then definitely look at that spleen PMG. That's a long-term immune system support. And then cataplex D, not only is it good for your bones, and remember, you have to be out in the sunshine for that to convert into vitamin D, but it's great, 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 great for um, building the modulation of your innate and your adaptive immune system. So it's kind of a, I always include that for mostly for my immune system. I did a, re, I read a research paper and then I found about uh, 500 research papers on how uh, strong support vitamin D is. Whole food D, not D3, not D2. That's just a little fragment of it. That's like me giving you a car with only one wheel, but it's the whole complex of the D. And when you, when you take that in, if you're not eating foods, and if you're not sure what foods have vitamin D in it, go to Dr. Google and say, what foods are rich in vitamin D? And it'll tell you. So that way you can pick foods that you like to eat. For me, sometimes I just can't eat enough foods and, and I do, and, or I may not eat them every day. So I feel it's important to support along the way. So I do a little bit of support every day. Uh, and then prosymbiotic. So that's another one. If I have a tummy ache or, you know, I'm not feeling good, I take the capsules and just write, open it right onto my tongue. It's got a little sweet flavor. Those are all the good bacteria. And it also has pre, uh, prebiotics in there too. The prebiotics feed the good guys and then it helps to build up the gut flora. What happens is people take just a probiotic, which is great, but if you're not feeding those guys, they die. You have to keep taking it, they die. You keep taking it, they die. But with prosymbiotic, you're giving the good guys and then you're feeding them, feeding them along the way. So then you build up your gut flora, you build up your good bacteria in there. Then you don't have to take it all the time. If you have some underlying conditions, you may take it longer than, you know, some, some patients I have it on a longer time because of their, their issues. But for me, I'll take it, you know, a couple times a week. Um, right now, I'm taking it every day. Remember, inside your large intestine, 75% of your gut-assisted lymph tissue is there. That's your immune system. So if you're eating bad, you know, sugar, that feeds the bad bacteria, so you're totally destroying your immune system. Also, 95% of your serotonin is made in your gut. Only 5% is made in your brain. So people that are um, maybe depressed or, you know, having issues that way, maybe fixing their eating, you know, dropping the sugar down, building up their good gut, building up that serotonin will be a, a important factor. Remember, we have a gut brain connection. How many times have you said, I have a gut feeling or I have butterflies in my stomach? You know, those are all the connection between our, our, our gut and our brain. So we've had it for a long time. We're just now, medical doctors are just now seeing that. We've been teaching it for 15 or 20 years, but it's like a shock to everybody now. So these are some of the things I would recommend for you to do. Uh, echinacea is the other one I didn't say, but echinacea helps to enhance the immune system. If you've been in the office and you've tried the liquid echinacea, you know how powerful it is and you can feel it kick right into your system. And if that's too much for you, then you can always take it by mouth. But I would continue a little bit of a regimen. If you're not sure, I would, bottom, what I would recommend is at least do Immuplex. And I would do at least two to three a day for right now. I do two to three a day of the Cataplex D. And a prosymbiotic, I do one to two of those a day. At a minimum, just to support your immune system. You don't have to do all of these. I'm not saying to do that. I'm just giving you options. The, the Echinacea, which is an herb, is pretty powerful, but herbs have a tendency to be a medicinal. So they're very symptomatic in their approach. So they'll give a good jolt to it to really enhance it. But we need like Immuplex to kind of maintain it. So keep those things in mind when you're, when you're uh, thinking about your immune system. And if you don't know what to do, just ask us. We'll be happy to help you uh, get you on a little bit of a regimen. I think it's super important, especially right now as we go back out into the workforce. So blueberries, I have to talk about blueberries. Uh, we, we visited King Grove Organic Farm last weekend. Um, we have uh, Hugh and um, Lisa are patients of mine and they, he goes to the bottom line to be able to have the blueberries uh, all organic. So he grows the organic Southern high bush blueberries. Um, they're not technically a vaccine, but they're well-known uh, boosters of the immune system. So I'll give you some information here. That's what we got. We have two of those in our uh, refrigerator. We'll freeze most of them, but they are actually as, as probably as big as your thumb. Well, my thumb, I've got 
big hands. So pretty big, pretty big blueberries. And so the King Grove, uh, it's an organic farm, and he he just goes to painstaking uh, uh, efforts. The the farm has been there for a whole time. We we got to talk to him, and he told us the history of the farm. It's actually a family farm, and he says um, they're not doing the pick. You pick the season, but you can order. So you can go to just, if you just Google King Grove Organic Farm, you can go to their website, you can order, pay for them and pick them up there. And they, down below, you can see the pickup days and hours for the farm. Um, I think that's really cool. And, you know, I always like to support the local farmers. Um, are they a little bit more expensive? Yeah, but if you know what he does to make that happen, it's amazing. He actually grows them in the ground. I mean, he just, he's, and he's passionate. He's like me. I mean, we could have had talked for hours. Marianne's like, uh, gotta go, gotta go. But uh, it, it really a great place and it was so beautiful out there. And they have um, uh, speakers. They have like all these speakers all over to keep the uh, predatory birds away. Because we're out there, I'm like, oh, is that a hawk? That sounds like, like some, type, some type of raptor. And it was all the, keeping the other birds away. And they have, you know, the car sales thing going and they have uh, kites up. Uh, so it, it's pretty cool to see out there and it's just beautiful also so um and great family thing to do you know you can't pick them this year but n normally they, they do let you pick them but even just the ride out there is beautiful so why blueberries blueberries are great so blueberries contain a flavonoid called called anthocyanin and that's actually what makes them the color blue and that's an antioxidant property and that helps to boost your immune system uh i read a couple of research reports and one i noted was uh that it has an essential role in your respiratory tracts immune defense so especially here in florida we know we need that with all our uh, uh pollen in the air um so they found that people who ate those uh, foods that are rich in flavonoids are like less likely to get upper respiratory tract infections common colds or than those who did not and the way we've been eating the blueberries in our household i know that we will probably never get sick uh, blueberries help your heart, your health, your bones, your skin, your blood pressure, uh, diabetes management, cancer prevention, and mental health because they're low in sugar, low in the glycemic index. So they're a great selection for the keto style of eating because they don't have a lot of sugar in them. Um, they've got a lot of good fiber in them. And one cup of berries is, uh, you know, a quarter of your intake for vitamin C in a day. So enjoy. So I want to talk to you about longevity because this all kind of goes in with this factor of sugar. And, and when we talk about longevity, there are factors that keep us living longer. And I talk about human aging and longevity. I don't talk about anti-aging because I don't want to stay the same age. I want a healthy age. And healthy age to me is being 80 or 90 and still being a viable, maybe even being 100 and still riding my bike and being able to give back. I mean, I have so many years of experience with nutrition and teaching. I want to have, be able to do that for a long time. I don't want to sit in a wheelchair drooling on myself because I didn't take care of myself. So when we talk about the factors that help us live a long time, we have several. One, we have genetic factors. Those are what we call intrinsic factors. That's what we're born with. And then we have epigenetic factors. Those are both intrinsic but external uh, that are put in there. So that's like the foods we eat, the exercise that we do, the sleep that we get. Those are intrinsic factors that affect our uh, epigenetic factors. Our, our diet and lifestyle, those are, that's definitely changeable. And then our environment. We are just so lucky to be in Florida and not have all of the the smokestacks like they do in the, the Northern territories, uh, like California. We were at Calif in California a few years ago and you could just see the, the layer of smoke there. We just are so lucky not to have that, especially right now. I think mother earth is saying, thank you very much. Thank you. I can breathe. So when we look at a healthy diet and lifestyle factors and for longevity, this is what you want to incorporate at least three and a half hours of exercise minimum per week. That's about 30, 40 minutes a day. I mean, most people sit for 12 hours working, so what's 30, 45 minutes? So if you can't fit it in, then there's something wrong. Start with it at the beginning of the day. That could be any exercise. In order to get yourself body strong, though, you have to do something called hormesis, which means you have to push your body a little bit. So when you're walking, take a driveway or two, driveway, between driveways or light posts, or if you're on your bike, um, ride a little bit faster, walk a little bit faster till you get a little huffy and, and puffing. That makes your heart stronger. If you don't walk the same way all the time, it's good, but it's not going to condition you. So keep that in mind. So exercise is good. And being hungry is also good. That's one of the benefits of the intermittent fasting is that when you get hungry, what we're so um, – we're so dedicated to eating three meals a day, we never let our body go into a fasting state to get hungry. That's when we're burning body fat. When your body says, I'm hungry, and you don't feed it, it says, okay, well, I'm going to eat the fat here because that's what I have to use. 
keep that in mind. So we can, um, you know, we, we can change our eating, like we said. So alternative healthy eating, that's a top 40% of what we need to really do. And I mean, that's telling us that, you know, a lot of people don't do it. If we're doing it and we did it for 10 days, we can do it for longer. Uh, not smoking, you know that, that's just a bottom line. Moderate alcohol drinking, not for the children, but for the adults. Um, women can have five to 15 grams a day, men can have five to 20. Um, so, you know, that's a glass of wine. So it's not bad having a glass of wine a day. I, 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 red wine is gonna be better than white wine, why? Because there's less sugar in red wine. Um, you watch your beers and your sugar drinks because you're gonna get more sugar in those. So be mindful of that. And then your body mass index. If you've been in the office, you've done a class, uh, if you don't know what your body mass index is, next time you come in, ask uh, Tina or Judy to weigh you and we will show you what that is. So we wanna keep that between 18 and 24. Uh, 68, almost 69% of our people in Florida are either overweight or obese. That's, that's really sad. That means only 32% of us are of healthy weight. So I like all of us to be there. So if you do those, so if you do nothing, you'll live to be 50 years maybe 79. Would it be a quality? I mean, I know some 79 year olds that don't have quality of life. They're 79 years old, but you know, they can't, they, they, they struggle to get up. They, you know, they, they have so many sound effects just getting out of a chair. Um, they don't do anything and they, they, you know, they're not happy and they're, they're depressed. So, you know, I don't want to be that way. Um, if you do one of those things, so say you just don't smoke, just one thing, you'll add, uh, you know, a couple years to your life. You'll live to 81. Um, if you do all of those things, you can live to a healthy 93, and that's as a viable, healthy person. And that's your normal life expectancy. Sorry, guys, you don't get the, quite the benefit, but women, we're catching up. So women will live longer. We've always had a little bit, we handle stress better. Um, most of us do. Some of us, you know, cold, hold things inside and it builds up and it will come out. For my female patients, I always say, whatever you put in your body, you know, whatever stress you hold inside and you don't let it out, you don't have it, let it have a venue to get out, either exercise, crying, singing, dancing, I don't care what it is, taking noodles from the pool and beating the crap out of a tree, I don't care. But if you hold that inside, it's going to come out some way. It'll come out as some form of disease, some, some form of uh, skin eruption, um, some form of stomach problem, diarrhea, constipation, um, you know, anything like that will happen. So make sure you provide an outlet. My guys don't seem to have that as much. They have a, they're better at getting exercise and doing that. Women are getting better at that. So keep that in mind for your, ex, your life expectancy. And if you're doing those things, if you're doing all those things, a healthy diet, normal weight, being active, not smoking and moderate alcohol drinking, then you have a 60% chance of not getting cancer for men, 40% for, for, for chance for women. And you can see the differences here in diabetes. Your 80% chance of not having diabetes uh, for men and 90, almost 95% for women just by adopting this low risk lifestyle. And low risk lifestyle means you're gonna have better quality of life. And that's really what we want for all of you. That's why I went into chiropractic. I didn't wanna be a, a, a push, push a pill that was just gonna take care of a symptom. I wanted to teach you how to take care of yourself so you can be well. And that's my passion. That's Dr. Cooper's passion, everybody in the office. So that's why we, we love you. We want you to be well. So post-program, you've worked really hard to get to this 10 days. Whether you did the supplements for the 10-day program or not, maybe in Ju July when we do it again, you'll try it with the supplements. You know, you've worked hard. We, we don't want you just to, you know, I, I know this is Thursday and the weekend's coming. Don't just throw it out the window. Just make healthy choices. Remember, eating is, you know, when you eat, it's either an act of nutrition, I know this sounds horrible, or an act of suicide. You have the choice of what you put in your mouth. Make a healthy choice. So the journey continues. So you can add some grains in, but I would stay with like quinoa, which is a seed. It's a little lower in the glycemic index. Some sprouted grains, maybe some wild rice, but limit those servings. If you're going to do a keto style, I don't, I don't eat those. Maybe once in a while, but not very often. Fruit, two to three servings per day. I would use it in your shakes, but if you're going to eat it as a snack, make sure you measure it because it's too easy to grab handfuls of blueberries like we've been doing. Um, and then you can add some cheeses in. Remember, white cheese is going to be better than yellow cheese because what color is milk? White. And then, you know, look at your fats. So we want to stay in these good fats, avocado oils, nuts oils, coconut, olive oil. I've never had tiger nut oil. Uh, rendered animal fat, I mean, that, you know, that's lard. Um, I, we don't really cook with that. We don't have animal fat around, but um, 
you know, those are some choices. Um, we have macadamia nut oil. If you're going to get an oil that, that's quality oil, make sure it's expeller pressed um, and make sure it's, uh, it's not hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated. Uh, palm oil, sunflower oil, some of these things you can, you can have, but be careful with your sunflower oil because a lot of it's hydrogenated. You want to make sure it's expeller pressed, but just use this occasionally and avoid these. I know canola oil has been touted as a health oil. It's highly hydrogenated. Uh, vegetable oils. And then when I do the 21 day, I talk about what they do to, hydrog to hydrogenate a fat. Um, so we want to stay away. So if you have these in your cabinet or your pantry or your uh, refrigerator, get rid of them. Uh, pour the oil out as a weed kitter and re killer and recycle your, boil your, your bottles. Um, don't buy margarine. Um, you know, if it's not open, donate it to the, I can't even, it's hard for me to even tell you to donate it to the food banks because I don't want anybody else eating it. Um, sleep, um, sleep tips, so prayer meditation, a clean diet helps sleep, early morning sunlight, writing in a journal uh, about your day to get it out of your head, uh, don't work where you sleep, uh, no electronics two hours before bed, it's proven that we get that blue light ingrained in there, and never play a game, I made the mistake of playing Wordscape before I went to bed one time I was traveling, and all night long my body kept trying to solve the problem, I did next morning. Sound therapy, also good. Uh, we have a big fan in the bedroom just for noise. Um, if you need some supplementation, and I don't want you taking heavy duty drugs, Mintran works super great. Minchex, magnesium, Kava Forte is, a, is what we use instead of um, like uh, Xanax, uh, Valerian Complex. All those are really good for uh, helping with sleep. So exercise, you wanna do strength, cardio and flexibility. So stretching before you exercise. And remember, I, I always talk about, when we talk about cardio and we talk about strength training, cardio exercise is like paying your credit card. You have to pay it off every month. And next month you pay it off and you pay it off and you pay it off. And you always pay it off because you charge something, you pay it off. But your strength training is like paying your mortgage. And once you've paid your mortgage off, you just maintain. So you've got to do both. And I always incorporate the, fle the flexibility in there. Uh, as far as sweeteners, avoid all these. Um, you can use honey, you know, now you can use honey, but sparingly. Remember, it's got, does have carbohydrates in it. Uh, maple syrup, if it's organic or, you know, not, not uh, Aunt Jemima's. I mean, that's just maple water that's thickened with corn syrup. Monk fruit um, is a low glycemic, like the Veggie Pro shakes have monk fruit in them to sweeten them. It does not raise your glycemic index. A stevia, pure stevia, sweet leaf, uh, sugar alcohols, if you can tolerate it. Remember, sugar alcohols may cause some digestive issues, uh, diarrhea, flatulence, you know, that kind of stuff. So sometimes not a pretty um, uh, effect. So if you just want something to do just to kind of take care of you, um, Catalan is our multi, trace mineral B12, and fish oil. Either tuna, if you're over 50, I like cod liver oil because it has vitamin A, vitamin D, the liver from the cod, and the omega, good omegas. Um, if you're having a gymnema, I mean, a sugar problems, gymnema is definitely one to keep in your, in your cabinet. Uh, Boswellia complex, I like. I like turmeric forte best, uh, one to two tablets for inflammation, and Livaplex for some liver support. If you're having a weight management issue, your liver's been working pretty hard, or let's just say you've worked your liver really hard. The liver is evil; it doesn't need, it does not need to be punished, and we do punish it. The liver's not evil, I should say. Uh, so sometimes a little bit of liver support may be needed, but just just check with us; we can help you out with that. And the reason why I talk about standard process, and, and you know that I'm passionate about it, I've been to the farm. I've touched the soil. They 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 take their 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 um, compost and re re put it back in the soil. They don't use any pesticides. They have bird for birds for insect control. They have pollinators. Uh, they have their all their land separated by barriers so that they're not affected by any of the other people that spray. And, and you know they're passionate about what they do. And they these are all whole food based supplementation. Um, if you take a vitamin, a multivitamin, and you're not taking something that, that, that I've suggested or Dr. Cooper suggested, look on the label. And here's how you can tell if it's, it'll say natural. That doesn't mean it's organic. Um, if it says for your vitamin C, it says ascorbic acid, you can tell that it's made in a lab. So that's a chemical. So keep that in mind. So if it's, you know, we're, when we're making vitamin C, we're making the whole orange. You don't pull the ascorbic acid out of the orange or the apple. You have to have the whole, all the components to make that vitamin C. Um, so keep that in mind. That, that's what I just talked about for your foundation, just your, for your fundamentals, just to keep your body going. If you need other stuff, that's fine. So next year, watch out for this guy. This year, $19.5 billion was spent on Easter candy. 
So make some changes for next year. You can do healthy Easter baskets or maybe Easter experiences for the kids. Um, and and or just don't buy it. If you buy it, only buy one of something or buy it that day. So next class we have will be in July. We'll do a summer cleanup 10-day uh, program. So um, I highly recommend it. It's just kind of a way to kind of get you in there. I, I probably will do a Zoom class again because it's nice. I can kind of get a bunch of people at one time. Um, and then we can ask questions and we can all be in the comfort of our own home because I know our schedules are super busy. And also if you have somebody that, in your household that needs to hear the information, it's also a great way to do that. Um, you, you, some of you can even stream, stream it on your big, big screen TVs. Um, so in January, you can do the 21-day program or the new detox balance program. And, you know, we'll put those dates out. We have the dates for the rest of the year and they're at the front desk whenever you see them and they're on the website. So remember, health is a journey, not a destination. So I'm going to open it up here to questions. Let me see all your pretty faces. Oh, there we look at all of y'all. Look at that. I saw that face. Let me see if I can bring this bigger here. I'm trying to make it super big. I see some of you. Okay. Any questions? Hillary, I know you have a question. <laughs> no, 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 question. come on. Yay. I'm disappointed. <laughs> no, I, um, I just am wondering about the supplements for the, cause I did the, the inflammation one. Right. Um, and I know Lauren, you said that one of them was good for hot flashes, but I can't remember which one. Black currant seed oil. Okay. Black currant seed oil, or if that's not strong enough for you, chase tree. And that's a, that's an herb and that works really well as well. Yeah, I have that. Okay. So uh, I like black currant seed oil. Any other questions? Wilma? Unmute yourself. Here, wait. I can't, you have, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Are you asking me a question, Wilma? I sure can unmute there. myself. There we go. Yes. What, what's the best olive oil brand to buy? Uh, you know, you just really have to read your label. You want oh, always the extra virgin <laughs> olive oil. There, I mean, there are a lot of different brands out there. I mean, there's some... You know, I know that in the movie they probably had commercials came that that came up on the the during the the video uh, that touted different olive oils. But any extra virgin olive oil is what you want. That's the first that's the first pull off the olive, and okay. you just want to make sure it's expeller pressed and it's not hydrogenated. And usually, the more expensive it is, you know, it'll be a better quality. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Gosh, you guys are a quiet crowd. I, I oh, okay, question. Terry, go ahead. All right, I got to unmute myself. Am I unmuted? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Now I can't. There. All okay. right. Uh, so I have an order for a blood draw, but I haven't had it done yet. Right. So um, is there any cause for concern to go there or do I need to make an appointment or I just walk in? No, I, what I would do is to do it at first thing in the morning. You can make an appointment so you can get your blood work first thing in the morning. I always recommend to do, you know, make sure you eat a light veggie meal the night before, not a big heavy steak. Um, if you're, are you going to go do it tomorrow morning? Um, I already had dinner tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, Probably after Monday. I mean, yeah, you can do it Monday. So Sunday night, maybe Saturday, Sunday, just be real good on your eating. Don't eat a lot of heavy, um, proteins like uh, steak or anything like that and, and watch okay. your sugar because I want to make sure your sugar, um, your blood glucose is good and do it first thing okay. in the morning on a fasting stomach. No, no food after, I would say no food after nine o'clock. Okay. And then for a consultation with you, I'll just call and make an appointment. Yeah. Just call Judy or Marianne. I'll get you in. Okay. Perfect. I'm good. Thank Mary, you. Mary, you look like you have a question. No, you don't have a question. All right, I, I, and I, let's see, Polly D in the house. No questions from you? You're doing. Well, I can't hear you. Can you unmute? Yes, hi, sorry. Hi. Look, sun, Ooh. I know, I see that sunlight. Wow, you like that? Um, uh, just a reminder to share the links. We watched uh, Fed Up earlier today, and that's uh, both sad and horrifying. Right. And hey, Jaime. Jaime's here, too. 
uh, just a reminder to put the, the links on the yeah I'll put I'll put links for both classes on there uh, that way you can uh, look through that I haven't it's just gonna be raw I haven't had figured out how to um, uh, edit them yet so I will upload them on, on YouTube as well but I'll send everybody the links tomorrow morning okay Chris. All right. And also, I will tell you, there's another movie that we watched after Fed Up. It was called That Perfect. That Sugar Film. I'll put a link for that. That is on. That was also on YouTube. Um, extraordinary. Um, the guy was really funny. It's it's pretty enjoyable, but it's pretty shocking. He eats 42 teaspoons of sugar a day. Ooh. So all the foods he eats are 42 teaspoons of sugar, and he tries to eat it in regular food, and then he literally takes sugar spoonfuls of sugar when he, instead of the food or puts sugar that's added to his food by just putting sugar on it. So it's quite um, shocking. Oh my God. So I will put those links on that for that also. You're trying oh. to get diabetes. Why is he doing that? Well, he did it as an experiment to see and within, uh, within a week, he did it for four weeks and within a week he had a fatty liver. Oh my God. Yeah. It was, it was just shocking. I, I don't know what, I mean, he did it as an experiment just to see and you know, he, he, he charted his journey. So it was pretty interesting. All right. So yeah, if he would have kept going, he would have had diabetes, but it's pretty shocking. Let's see. I have some chatting here. Let me just see. Like what's, kind of uh, all, the time. all right. We'll get you on the email list. All right. Any other questions? No questions. Well, I'm very proud of everybody. Um, if so, here's here's what I want to throw out there. If anybody has kids that are, you know, like probably fourth, fifth grade and up, um, I would be willing to do a little, um, like maybe a 45 minute um, nutrition class for them on Zoom. To do. So if you don't have kids, it's not going to matter to you. But I would do a uh, like a 45 minute, maybe no, to an hour. So. Yeah. I'll incorporate um, math, science. Um, so it'd be something kind of fun for the kids to do. So if you want to, if you're interested in that, just send Tina an email. And Tina will put her email address on there. Uh, or we call the office, just let us yeah. know. And then I'll, I'll put it together and load it up on uh, on Zoom. And then hit raise your hand. Raise hand. Oh, who's, right? who's talking? Amy? Who's raising their hand? I don't see any hands coming. Terry. Ter Terry. I yes, Terry. Know. Okay. So at the beginning, you said. Where are you? I don't see you. Hey, mom. Hey, my mom's there. Hey, mom. She doesn't like to be on TV. Where's Where's Terry? I don't hear you, Terry. No, Terry. She froze. She froze. Poor Terry. All right. So if you have any other questions, um, you can e email me. I'll send you an email in the morning. You can respond to that. I'll talk about the class for the kids if that's helpful for you. Um, if anything else, I just want to congratulate you. Enter back into the real world safely and have fun this weekend. It's going to be wonderful weather. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. All right.